This video is brought to you by WP Forms. WP Forms is the most beginner friendly drag and drop WordPress forms plugin on the market. Just click on the link in the description below to get started. The first 200 people to use coupon code WPBVIP will get 50% off WP Forms. Hey there. In this video, you'll learn exactly what on page SEO is and how to do it for your blog. And all that means is you're going to perform the on page SEO that lets Google know what your site is about and lets the searchers know how to find you. And throughout this video, you'll learn the step-by-step -step process of what to do for on-page SEO on each and every blog post that you have for your website. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Really all on-page SEO is, is a group of steps or a group of features that you want to make sure that you've done to your blog post on your website. You have the most control over on-page SEO. And so it's really critical to do this for each blog post after you've written them. These steps are basically just a checklist that you want to make sure that you've done. To make this process even easier, you want to make sure that you have a plugin installed on your website. We recommend the Yoast SEO plugin, but if you already have another one, then that's fine. You can use that. And basically all of these plugins do is they take that checklist that we're doing and they integrate it into the website so that you kind of have green check marks as you go along. It's a really good way to see that you're doing a good job with on page SEO. You can do it without a plugin, but then you will have to dig into some of the HTML and that's simply why these make it a lot easier to do. Now doing on page SEO is something that you'll want to do after you write each blog post. And don't worry if you've already created a lot of blog posts out there and you haven't done this, then take some time throughout the weeks or days and go through this process on each of those. The cool thing about it, if you've already have a lot of blog posts on your site and you haven't done this by going through this process, you'll likely see a nice uptick in your traffic and in your search volume. So that's kind of cool. Now there are a couple of prerequisites that you want to make sure you have. We already talked about making sure that you have the Yoast SEO plugin for your website. The other thing you want to make sure that you have is that you've already done some keyword research and you can watch our last video on how to do keyword research for your website. If you haven't done that already, the final thing you want to make sure you have is you want to make sure that you have connected your website to Google analytics. And if you haven't done that yet, or if you don't already know how to do that, we have another video on here on how to install Google analytics for your website. And there are three methods you can use on that. So check out that video as well. And that's just simply so you can start gathering data for your website on what's working and what isn't. All right. Now that we have all the prerequisites out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to use an article as an example to walk you through this process. Okay. So I've picked a blog post that I want to optimize for. And what you can do is go ahead and pick one that you've already written or write one out first, and then you can follow along throughout this checklist. So I'm going to optimize this blog post about on page SEO, and you can do anything like this with your parent blog, or if you're learning how to garden and you're teaching people how to do that, any website that you have, go ahead and follow along. This works perfectly for any of those. So the first thing you want to make sure that you have is you want to make sure that you have the keyword that you want to rank for. We want to rank for on page SEO. And so you want to make sure that you have the keyword in your title and you want to make sure that you have it as close to the beginning of your title as you can. Don't make it sound crazy or don't make it sound weird. If you can't do that, don't worry. You also want to make sure that you have it in the URL structure. This is the permalink and you see it's got all this funky stuff and that's because I haven't published it yet. Typically when we click save draft, what WordPress will do is it will take our title and it will give us the URL structure based on the title. You don't always want to have a long URL like this. Ideally, you want to keep your URL structure as short as you can. So what I typically do and what most people typically do is they'll simply make sure that they have the keywords that they want to rank for in the URL. Basically make that your, your URL structure. It makes it nice and short. And it's easier for Google to index and it also is easier for people to read it when they're doing the search going along in your first paragraph. It's really important to make sure that you have that keyword at least once or twice in the first hundred words if you can. So like you see here, uh, we don't quite have that here. So you could change it up a little bit to make sure 
that you have your keyword in the first paragraph. With WP Beginner, if you've noticed, we always typically ask the question of, are you looking to do on-page SEO for your website? And then we'll say something, and then we'll say, throughout this article, we'll show you how to do on-page SEO. That's a really clear way to let the reader know, hey, you've clicked on the right thing. This is about what you want to learn about. And it also tells Google right up front what our article is about. So let me do that real quick. Okay, this also brings up another idea. When you have varying types of your keyword, for instance, we have a hyphen up here, and then down here we don't, you can adjust your keywords throughout the article, and that's just variations of what everybody is searching for, and that's okay. You also want to make sure that you have a link early on in your website or early on in your article that's in case someone doesn't really want to read this, but maybe they want to read this article. It reduces your bounce rate in Google Analytics, and it just tells Google that they're still interested in what your site is about, and they're going to go on to another page. So you see we have a link high up here to take them somewhere else. Now, as you've written your blog post, you also want to do some nice subheadings. And then as I highlight this, you see that this is an H3. You have H1, which is always associated with your title. You never want to have more than one H1, and you know that your title is the H1, so just don't have to worry about it again on your article. But down here, we see we have some more subtopics or subheadings, and you want to make sure that in those subheadings that you have a supporting keyword or the keyword itself that you're wanting to rank for. What do I mean by supporting keyword is when I'm talking about on-page SEO, there are other things that will typically come up when discussing on-page SEO, and that's like keyword research, URL structure, things like that. And you'll want to make sure that you have those supporting items in your subheadings. And this just gives Google a nice overview that you have a complete content information for your readers. Now, going through here, we talked about having internal links up close to the top if you can. Also throughout the article, you want to have three or four other links that are pointing to your site as well. These are called internal links and they're crucial to let Google know what your site is about. When you do the link, you want to set it up with the keyword that that article that you're pointing to is about. This just tells Google, okay, I'm pointing to this other article. It's about how to install Google Analytics for beginners. And then that article will be all about how to install Google Analytics for beginners. So go through there and make sure if you can of creating three or four links to other internal pages as you go along. And a lot of times what we'll do is maybe a Friday or throughout our weekly article production, we will go through and add links to previous blog posts to our new articles. So get in the habit of this is kind of a ongoing process that you'll want to do. And this just gives Google a nice overview of everything that your website is about. So that's linking. You notice as I'm scrolling through that our article has a nice, a lot of white space, a lot of area that doesn't make the reader fatigued by reading a whole block of text. Get in the habit of doing that. One of the best ways you can do that also is by adding images. When you're adding images, there are a few things that are critical that you do. First, you want to make sure that you label the file name itself. So let me show you what I mean. This is a, an image, and you typically see this once you take a, a picture with your camera and then you download it. It's usually a bunch of letters and, and numbers. Change this to the description of what it is, and this will be easier when you upload it. It also kind of just keeps everything organized a little bit better. Then when you upload the image, there are a few things that you want to make sure that you have. First, you want to make sure that you add alt text and you want this to be descriptive about what the image is about. This helps for Google to know what this is about, but it's also important for accessibility issues. People who can't see this image, they use and rely on browser readers to tell them what's going on on your website and what this image is about. So make it descriptive for them. 
The third thing you want to do, and we'll cover this deeper in the technical SEO video that will come out later, but you want to make sure that your file size is smaller. So before you even upload it, there'll be some things that you'll want to make sure that you can do to reduce it. Also having images on your site simply reduces the block of text and increases your user's readability. So they're more likely to continue to scroll down, which also helps in telling Google that your site is what they want to read about. Great. Now that you've gone through that checklist on when, after you've first created the blog post, there are a couple of things in Yoast. When you install it, you can go all the way down to the bottom of your article and you'll see this Yoast SEO area here. There are a couple of things that we need to fix here as well. So we have our title and we have what is called the meta description. And we want to change that. And all this meta description is, is if I go to when I'm going through and doing the search for Google and I'm looking at everything, this is what's called the meta description. This is the information that Google is bringing back. That's telling the reader what this article is about. And you'll want to go in and adjust that accordingly. Now here's the caveat. Google doesn't always use your meta description that you've written for that. If they think that there's a better description, they'll bring that in. However, you don't want to leave it up to Google in the beginning. So we'll fill out the meta description. Now, did you notice when I was typing that in or when I added that in, we have a green bar below. That's simply because there is a character limit that once it's reached, Google is going to cut that off. So if I keep going, then you see it turns orange. And that's simply saying that this area back here will likely be cut off and the user won't even see that. The current character limit is 160 characters. So anything after 160 characters will be cut off by Google and that will change every once in a while. Once we're done adding the meta description here, we can close this snippet area. Now, one of the other areas where you can concentrate on for Yoast SEO is add the focus key phrase. And this is simply allowing Yoast to tell us Okay, did it? Did we have the keyword that we want to rank for in the areas that are important? So you can do, you can add the keyword phrase that you're wanting to rank for. And what Yoast will do is it'll go out and it will give you kind of a green light, yellow light, red light idea. I'm going to click save draft to see if it gets any better. And now when we click save, you see that we have some green lights going on. Now you can get a little crazy and try to make sure that all of these are green. But if you just follow this small checklist and go through those and make sure that you get those right, then you'll do a tremendous job in improving your sites on page SEO. That should also improve the rankings that you have in Google. And you'll start to rank for these keywords that you're shooting for. But if you want, you can go through and figure out some of these other items. But you see down here, these are the good results that we have. And it's most of the items that we've discussed. And as you can see, because everything on on page is in our control, it's one of the easiest things to do for your website to help with its rankings. In our next video, we'll cover off page SEO, which is a little bit more about backlinking and kind of getting your site out there and seen by others. So make sure that you click on the subscribe button and go ahead and click on the bell so you'll be notified of our future videos as they come out. Now tell me which method are you going to use first in doing your on-page SEO?